Hi guys, it's Randy. Welcome to Tuesday's carpool combo. And um, I wanted to, I've gotten some good requests to keep doing these. So Tuesday and Friday, those are my days. And I can't promise that I'm going to be here on at 2.30, especially on a gorgeous day like today. Here, I'll show you for those people that don't live in Houston. I don't know if you can see. I guess look up through my sunroof, see how blue the sky is it is literally like it's like San Diego weather today and I was very busy walking my dogs with my bestie um, and so I I couldn't commit to being here at 2 30 so um yeah that's a, evidently a thing on Facebook live is you can like if something resonates you can give me a little thumbs up or a heart and um, that lets me know. So yeah, so I'm getting consistent with doing these carpool convos on Tuesdays and Fridays, and I'll pop on sometime between 2.30 and 2.45. And, um, and when I was thinking about what I want to talk to you guys today, um, it, I think what keeps popping into my head, and it really comes from a call that I was on yesterday, a program that I'm in as a coachee um, with my favorite coach Brooke Castillo and um, and it was there was a topic there was a woman being coached and it was all about boundaries and she was talking about um, she was talking about how she was so annoyed with everyone all the time that people are just so annoying and um, yo um, people are so annoying and she gets so annoyed with people all the time and so they started talking about it and um, and she said, you know, like, for instance, I have this coworker, and I'm super busy, and I'm getting all my stuff done, and this coworker, she's constantly asking me for help on things, and, um, and it's just so annoying. Like, she just can't manage anything by herself, and she always wants my help. And, and so the bottom line is, is that she didn't understand what boundaries were, and I resonated with this because years ago... Like it's to me the term boundaries. It's kind of like um, it's like the term self care. Like a lot of people talk about it and drop that term, those terms. But like, what the fuck does that even mean? And frankly, they are kind of like those terms that annoy me. Like whenever I hear somebody talking about you know a self help person talking about honoring your self care, it just it, I, I don't know what that means exactly. It kind of sounds indulgent and pretentious. And I'm just like, what does that even mean? So when you talk about what self-care can look like, which is just taking care of yourself and your own needs, not being a martyr, um, not thinking that you need to like be the whole like martyr mom. Um, wait, what, but my self-care, I don't understand what you mean by that. Um, like the whole martyr momdom um, is total bullshit. And so if you don't take care of your own needs and you're constantly, my self care is listening to your carpool combo. Exactly. That's my point. Like you got to take care of your own needs, whether it's listening to something inspiring or connecting, um, you know, checking in with an old friend who is on the same wavelength as you and feeling validated. Like I'm not in this all alone. I have somebody else that totally thinks the way I do. And all these other people that are showing up that also think like I do, um, like that self care, that saying in my busy day, I'm working like for you, Nicole, I'm working. I've got three kids. I'm doing tons of stuff. I'm a volunteer. I'm taking care of people for my job right? As a social worker, I'm taking care of so many people. And at, you know, 1.30, 1 140, because it's 140 your time, during my day, I'm going to make time to get in on this conversation because it's going to energize me and it's going to make me a better version of myself for the people I help at the hospital, for the, for my kids when I get home. Um, you know, self-care might be getting a mani-pedi because it makes you feel better when you look down and you've got manicured fingernails. It might be getting your hair done, but it also might be just making the time for in the evening when your husband wants to hang out with you saying, um, sorry, I want to watch the show that I want to watch, or I want to read something that I want to read, or I want to catch up with a friend. It's just realizing that there's a balance 
and putting your own needs up there with everyone else's. It doesn't mean the selfish thing of it's all about your needs, your needs, your needs. It's just about the balance of it. So, okay. So yeah. So the same thing with boundaries. So I hear the term boundaries and I'm like, what the hell is that? What does that even mean? So years ago, I went to a therapist and, um, I went three times to a therapist and then she kind of, she's, she's actually a pretty ethical therapist because she released me. Um, but I went to her and I was having an issue about my parents. My parents super involved with my kids, live for my kids. So lucky to have my parents in my kids' lives. My kids feel very blessed and loved by my parents. Um, but I was, I was frustrated with them and like, like this lady was saying on the call yesterday, like constantly annoyed. So I went to this therapist because I knew that like, I was acting like an asshole to them. And I knew that they're here. They are like, like these very loving people wanting to do everything in the world. Like we're going out of town. They're like, we'll keep your dogs. We'll, we'll drive you to the airport. You know, I'll keep your kids overnight on the weekend. They, they wanted to do, do, do for me. And then yet I was finding myself so annoyed with them like all the time. And so it was making me feel like a bad person. So I go to this therapist and I kind of tell her like, I want to stop feeling annoyed with my parents. And, um, and so she's like, well, tell me what's going on. So I just kind of start telling her about and telling her how great my parents are and how they're just like the best grandparents. And then I gave the story that, um, that kind of defines my dad. And it's literally for 10 years, my dad came over almost every morning to my house at seven o'clock in the morning. He let himself in with his own key and hung out with my kids while they were having breakfast before school. And he just, he needed to see them and be with them before school. And, and I just knew it was a testament to how devoted he was to them. However, during those mornings, like I was jumping through hoops to get everybody situated. My husband at that time went to work really early in the morning. So it was all me. So I've got a big space in between my kids. So I had like, like when Alec was seven, Corey was born. So I had almost, he was almost eight actually. So I had like eight, four and a half and newborn. Okay. And before that I had just Alec and Avery, but, um, but Alec was, you know, he was always my challenging kid. Like the mornings I wanted to let him sleep till the last minute. I needed to make sure he had a good breakfast. He was irritable a lot. Um, it was just a mad dash. It was a rush. Y'all all get it. So, um, so my dad would be there and really it would just be like one more mouth to feed. Like I'd be making scrambled eggs real quick and he'd be like, Oh, you should take those off the fire. Now I like them runny. <laughs> and yeah, you know, and then he was also wanting to have a conversation with me cause like I'm there and I'm, tending to the kids and getting, you know, helping them get their backpacks packed up and all that kind of stuff. And he's like, so what, you know, what do you have going on today? Because that's what people do. They make conversation. So the last thing I wanted was one more person needing my attention during those moments. The last thing I needed, I was literally, and then once I had a baby, it was like I had a newborn baby on top of getting two kids to school and ready and fed and backpacks packed up and all that stuff. So it was just a, it was a stressful deal to have somebody else in those moments needing my attention. But that situation defined my dad as the most devoted grandpa ever, like it never occurred to me that I could tell him that that didn't really work for me for him to come over at that time. And, um, and it also didn't occur to me to tell him like, Hey, like, I don't really want you coming over unannounced and using your key. It, it always jars me a little bit. I'm not expecting anyone. Like what if I'm walking around without a bra? You know, it's just so, um, so it never occurred to me that I could set those boundaries and stand up for what I wanted. So instead I just lived with this constant state of annoyance and I expected him to get the hint. Like if I was going to act as annoyed as I felt, eventually he would get the hint. He should get the hint. He was expected to get the hint. But the truth of the matter is, is that like he 
he came over because he wanted to come. He didn't really care if I was annoyed or not. Like he wanted to come over and see those delicious grandchildren. And so, um, he wasn't getting the hint. I mean, really almost 10 years. He could care less that I act annoyed. I acted annoyed or not. So if I wanted to change things and to, and to stop feeling annoyed and starting my day off feeling annoyed and then feeling guilty that I'm like this ungrateful daughter, I had to set those boundaries. I had to change it up and I had to learn how to do that. So setting boundaries is when your body's telling, like if you're annoyed with other people and just expecting them to get the memo to behave the way you want them to behave, you can't control other people. All you can do is manage yourself. So setting boundaries is just advocating for yourself in a kind and polite way and a compassionate way. Dad, hey, I you know, we're so blessed to have you. You're an amazing grandpa and I know you're crazy about the kids and I know you want to start every day with them. It doesn't work for me on school days. So, um, we got to figure out a different time and, um, and, and just being honest with him and, and not expecting him to get the memo by my behavior and me acting like a creep. And I had no clue how to do that. So, um, so that's what boundaries are. It's really not expecting other people to read your mind or to change their behavior based on what you're doing or how you're responding, but actually standing up for yourself and in a kind, compassionate way, just advocating for yourself and giving other people the benefit of the doubt to hear you and to realize like you're not trying to be hurtful. You just gotta, you know, you just gotta step up and and stand up for the things that you need to happen. And um and so I don't know if anybody has anything to say about this or any thoughts on it. Um but I think it ties I, I really feel like it ties into the whole parenting thing and kind of my platform, which is all about having that you know, peaceful household where you don't have to worry that you're screwing up your kids because every single thing is causing you to, you know, scream your head off like a crazy person and then feel guilty later. Um, it ties into it because if you start your day off feeling annoyed, not understanding how to stand up for yourself and your boundaries, not, you know, doing those little self-care things to make sure that your cup is filled, then your reserves are very low. And so when your kids start pushing your buttons or having challenging behavior or after a day of school, they're um, you know anxious about their homework or they're thinking about some kid that acted like a jerk to them or they're tired or they're hungry and they start to you know show you behaviors that are challenging because they're human and that's what people do, your reserves are too low to take those deep breaths, manage your own upset, manage your sense of calm and peace because you're already, you've started the day with these heightened cortisol levels. And so you don't have the reserve to show up as the parent you want to be when your kids start, you know, showing their own humanness. And, um, and I think it also ties into setting boundaries with our kids. You know, of course our kids want us to run back into the house and get them the thing that they forgot or to go upstairs and get them the thing that they forgot or to bring whatever up to school that they forgot for the 15th time or just to do whatever they can to make life easier for them. Of course they want us to do all those things. And it's a judgment call. Sometimes you do it. And sometimes it doesn't work in your day. Sometimes, you know, like especially now, it's like the other night I went to the grocery store um, on Sunday at 5 o'clock. No, my kids didn't want to go with me. They were like, what do you, we don't want to go. I literally like absconded with Corey because I wanted him to go with me because I knew it would be more fun for me if he went. And, um, and it would just, it would be quicker because he's very helpful. And so... Um, he didn't want to go. And when we got there, I actually had Corey and Avery with me. We got there. They were like 
totally feeding off of each other and bitching up a storm. I don't want to be here. Why are we here? I'm tired. You know, blah, 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 blah. And I said, you know what, guys? For many years, I was a stay-at-home mom, and I went to the grocery store most of the time without you. And now I'm working mom and I don't have as much time. And sometimes like we're a family, we're a team. We all have to eat at home. Sometimes we're all going to go to the grocery store together. We're all going to pitch in. It's going to be that much quicker and we're going to get in and out. And, um, and this is just part of the deal. And that was me setting a boundary and standing up for myself and saying, I don't want to just go to the grocery store by myself. I want you guys to help me. And, um, and we all eat the food at home. And so this is part of the deal. And so I stood up for that and you know what? They got with the program. We ended up having, um, a really fun time actually at the grocery store and they were super helpful, but just standing up for myself, what I've learned from that situation with my dad years ago, like I could have just buried it and been like, Oh, I do everything for this family. Fine. Don't come. It's Sunday. I'll just go to the grocery store by myself. And I would have schlepped everything out and put everything on the conveyor belt. And I mean, I had this one running this way, this one getting apples. Like we were all doing stuff because I stood up for myself and I knew how to do it. The whole thing was so much more enjoyable and I was also tired. So if I had done it all by myself, I know I would have been resentful. I would have held it in. I would have been annoyed and extra tired all night and we would have had a crappy Sunday night, but instead we had a good Sunday night and it was, and we had fun together. So, um, so understand what boundaries are, learn how to set them, stand up for yourself, advocate for yourself. Don't be a martyr. Don't do it all yourself. If your body is feeling annoyed, angry, anxious, like, ugh, I roll that your kids want one more thing from you, you have a choice. The choice is stand up for yourself and let them know, hey, this family is a team. Everybody needs to pitch in. I'm not going to do it all. It's not working for me. We got to come up with a better plan. So um, that's my carpool combo for today. If anybody has any questions or comments, or if you liked what I had to say, give me a few little hearts just to let me know. Um, but I want to talk about things that you guys are interested in. So I don't know if this was interesting to you or not. Um, so let me know. And um, thanks for tuning in. Oh, good. I just got to, I love this one. Okay, good. Thank you. Feedback is good. Perfect. Thanks, guys. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks. Oh, I love all those hearts. Um, okay. Bye until Friday. Friday, between 2.30 and 2.45, I'll be here. Bye, guys.